Lynn Keller. I'm from TriStar Risk Management, branch manager. I've been in comp for about 30 years. When I was asked to do a talk on, a 30 minute talk on fraud, I thought, I could do a three hour talk on fraud. Okay, the famous disclaimer, if you have any workers' compensation fraud cases, talk to your legal counsel. Did you know that the National Insurance Crime Bureau estimates that uh, in the United States, workers' comp is costing $30 billion? Yes, and the uh, California is contributing 10% to that. So it's a pretty big deal. In addition, uh, since insurance fraud has been around for quite a while, the uh, California Department of Insurance set up a fraud department in 1979, but in 19, I mean, in, in 1991, workers' compensation was carved out of that as a little subdivision. <coughs> there are many different types of workers' comp fraud. There's the employee fraud, which is claimant. Those are your injured workers who are committing fraudulent acts. There's employer fraud, medical provider fraud, adjuster fraud, agent fraud, and attorney fraud. And we'll talk about some of those. Well, what is fraud? How is it defined in the workers' compensation world? Well, word for word, any person who makes or causes to be made any knowingly fraudulent material statement or material representation for the purpose of obtaining or denying workers' compensation benefits or payments is guilty of a fraud, you'll find that in Insurance Code 1871.4. So basically what this says is there's got to be intent to deceive in order to get a benefit you're not entitled to, and you have to lie about it to get there. And in order for the case to be prosecutable, you have to prove both of those. That particular definition we just read through appears on all of these workers' compensation uh, forms. So the state is very serious about notifying all parties that if you commit fraud, you're going to go to jail. And if that isn't enough, every temporary disability check that leaves uh, a third party or an insurer's uh, office on its way to an injured worker has to have this warning attached or in the envelope. And basically the warning says, if you're gonna cash this check and you're accepting income from another source, you're guilty of some sort of crime and you can go to jail, that's fraudulent. So again, the state is putting the injured worker on notice that they have to play fair. So what happens when your injured worker is found guilty of, of workers' comp fraud? Well, they can get up to five years in prison. They can be fined up to $150,000 or double the value of the fraud. They can be ordered to pay restitution and court costs. So crime does not pay. Did you know that the California Department of Insurance is required by law to post all workers' comp fraud convictions on its website? And um, all you have to do is Google California Workers' Compensation Division of, uh, of Insurance and uh, Work Comp Fraud Convictions, and it will come up. There you'll find the crook's name, the location it happened, the conviction date, the offense, the amount defrauded, and the punishment. All right, did you know that every claims administrator and insurance carrier must have an established special investigation unit to manage its suspicious claims under their leadership? And it could either be in-house staffed with employees of that administrator, or it could be outsourced to an investigation firm that specializes in, in SIU. Uh, and uh, not only that, but all new claims examiners must undergo SIU training within 90 days of hire. Okay, that's, that's stated in the regulations. And all claims adjusters must undergo annual SIU training. Now, who pays? for, uh, who pays for all the anti-fraud programs that we're just talking about here and others? Well, you do. Self-insured employers through their assessment, um, you get an invoice from the Office of Self-Insurance Plans every year on your assessments, and, and part of it's the fraud assessment. Insurers are also assessed, and the state of California. And um, it goes into a pool. And this, this particular assessment is based on some big fa fancy formula that uses your uh, payroll and the total indemnity dollars that you have paid out on your claims, and then you get your invoice. But this pool of money is, is suddenly available every year. And where does that money go? Well, it goes to support all the pro anti-fraud programs, but there's something called the Fraud Assessment Committee. It is a committee of seven people appointed by the governor. 
and their job is to decide where that money goes, who gets it. Medical provider fraud is very prominent in California. This is all also where all the money is when it comes to fraud dollars. And it, it is a shame because medical provider fraud is very hard to prove, it's very hard to find, but when it does, it's usually a large sum of money. Now in this particular case, it is still developing. And this is known, or if you, if you read the uh, Google and some of the articles that have come out on this particular case, it is the largest workers' compensation medical provider fraud in San Diego County history. And again, it's still pending. Now the faces that we see there are the actual arrests of the first arrest that took place in November of last year. And then there's a second round of arrests that took place in February 2016. And what this is, is this is a medical scheme uh, where there were kickbacks for doctors to refer to each other. And there were attorneys involved that actually took unsuspecting injured workers and kind of put them in this particular scheme. And by the way, there wasn't a single injured worker arrested. These were all just doctors and attorneys that were arrested so far. And it is, it is said that these crooks actually had pocketed $25 million in fraudulent money they didn't deserve because they were uh, not only this big old kickback stuff, but they were also billing insurance companies and self-insured employers large, sum, large sums of money for medical treatment that they didn't provide. If you want to know more information, on the DWC website, there is this great little booklet, I guess. It's guidelines. It's called the Workers' Compensation Insurance Special Investigative Unit Guidelines and Protocols. It's about 40 pages long, and it's really a well-written, easy read, and it's really designed for in special investigation units. But it talks about how to identify fraud, looking at red, flag, red flagged claims, fraud in the law, pick, uh, how to pick an investigator, how to develop deposition questions, how to report fraud, and then prosecuting fraud. So it's something you may want to take a look at. It's free. You can download it off of the California Department of Insurance website. I'm going to do a special thanks to Probe Investigations because they are TriStar's SIU provider, but they also provide me with some of the claimant examples that we talked about.